Good morning. I'm Ashley James with Good Morning Maryland. I'm here with GBMC Dr. Jill Turner. Thanks so much for joining me today. It's my pleasure. This is great. We do this once a month, and this is a great way to get a lot of your questions answered by a medical professional. Today's topic is thyroid health, and the internet has been going crazy with questions about thyroid health. Um, and you know, this is a big topic. A lot of people um, are interested in. I would say uh, some of the the questions that we got most had to do with weight. So let's start with that. All right, I'm gaining weight. I can't seem to lose any weight. There's gotta be something wrong with my thyroid. Sure. You get that a lot, right? Uh, we do. Um, most people that are walking around, their thyroid's functioning normally, and it, it, it can be that your thyroid is responsible for weight gain or weight loss, but usually, most people that are walking around that feel fine otherwise are not hypothyroid and usually their weight gain is from other causes. Many hospitals have comprehensive weight loss centers, GBMC has one, but they, they those centers would absolutely be able to draw lab panels and assess your, you know, your caloric activity in terms of how much you take in and how much you burn and they would be able to tell you immediately. So most people, if your thyroid functions are normal, the thyroid for that person is not gonna cause the weight gain. Okay, so I just logged on with my phone, so keep your questions coming in. I'll ask Dr. Turner. We have some questions already. Laura says, my mom has th had thyroid cancer. How likely am I to get it too? So, good question. So, there is a family um, association with certain thyroid cancers, but it's not as strong as one that we see with breast cancer and colon cancer. So you, we would be more suspicious if she ended up with a thyroid nodule that it may be cancerous. What are some of the initial symptoms that someone is having issues with their thyroid? Sure, great, great question. So most people that end up with thyroid nodules, their thyroid functions normally. So they essentially have no symptoms. We see people nowadays, sometimes the patient will notice the thyroid nodule, sometimes their doctor on an exam, and many times people get imaging, CAT scans, MRIs, car accident, whatever it may be, neck pain, arm pain, and we'll pick up thyroid nodules, and they're, as they're called incidentalomas, which means we were getting the imaging for one reason and we found a thyroid nodule. So that is extremely common. Okay, uh, some of the tests that are done, what is the main test to determine if you have an issue? Sure, great question. So um, the, uh, the best imaging for your thyroid is an ultrasound, which is a well-established technology, old school, no radiation, non-invasive, no fasting involved. Um, so that is the mainstay that we use for uh, guiding our biopsies as well as following thyroid nodules. Um, okay, so let's see. Christy has a question. I had mine taken out. Can that slow my weight loss down? Well, um, as long as her replacement therapy keeps her normal, it, it won't affect her metabolism. Her metabolism will be normal as long as her thyroid function studies are normal. Okay. Um, Tiny says, I am hypo. How can I lose weight? Again, if someone is hypothyroid, they would usually be placed on medication to get their metabolism up. But it may be hard if, you're hy if you are hypothyroid to, to, to lose the weight. Your metabolism is slowed. Okay. And we also had some questions that were sent in before. Um, someone wrote in, I heard that in order to properly test thyroid hormones, you need to test a certain at certain times of day. Is there truth to that? So I, I think they, again, the, the answer is no, but I think they may have been referring to the fact that we tell people to take your thyroid hormone on an empty stomach, and most of the time it's recommended that you take it in the morning and not eat for an hour or two until it's absorbed. But we like people to take their thyroid hormone at the same time every day to try to help us regulate it. Okay. So when you get it checked is unrelated. Okay, gotcha. Um, Ann says, can having hypothyroidism reverse on its own? Um, certain times we'll see people that have hyperthyroidism and that will be transient or short-lived. Sometimes it's permanent. So usually not hypothyroidism, usually hyperthyroidism. So overactive gland may be temporary, usually an underactive 
doesn't start to function. Okay. Um, Liz would like to know, interesting question, what are some holistic or natural ways to help your thyroid? Sure. We, we, we did get a lot of those questions. It's really sort of a broad topic. There are so many sort of natural products that are touted as good for your thyroid health, but there's really no studies to show exactly even what that means. So if your thyroid functions normally, I'm not quite sure what you would possibly take to make it function even more normally. Yeah. So it's kind of a broad area, but it, I don't have any specific response. I know that the endocrinologist will see patients requesting alternative medication instead of taking Synthroid, which is the, the most common hormone that we use for replacement. But, but really all of the data, it really comes from sort of established thyroid hormone replacement and not necessarily sort of holistic medication. Okay, um, I hope I'm gonna pronounce this medication right. How could a low dose of naltrexone, does that sound right? Okay. Help with hypothyroid autoimmune disease? So, and I've seen that come up a few times, so. Sure, so, so the, the autoimmune, um, a very common cause for hyperthyroidism is, is Graves' disease, which was autoimmune disease. A very common cause for hypo or underfunctioning thyroid is, is um, sort of a lymphocytic or an inflamed uh, thyroiditis and a chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis and Hashimoto's, at which are both benign conditions. But there's really, we don't tend to treat when you hear autoimmune, a lot of times you think, oh, we give you steroids to stop your immune system. So we don't really treat the autoimmune disorders for thyroid disease with steroids, which I think that person may have been alluding to. Okay. Sandy said, I have seen many endocrinologists, but none have addressed the cause of my Hashimoto's. Is there another type of doctor who can help with this? Well, the, we don't necessarily know what causes Hashimoto's. so. You, you, we can't cure it, it's an autoimmune disease, and, and it, again, typically your, your, your thyroid is burnt out, so it, we can't get it to grow back. So once you have hypothyroidism, the treatment is more for hypothyroidism, which is hormone replacement. We, there, you, you still have, even if you ended up having you know, a thyroidectomy, we still, there's no, we've never treated the Hashimoto's, we don't know how to treat it. Yeah, for those just tuning in, can you, Go into detail a little bit more about Hashimoto's, what we do know about it. And sure. So, don't know. so Hashimoto's is a, one of the most common causes for hypo, or in this case, underactive uh, thyroid. And that is an autoimmune disorder, as we were just talking about, and your body tends to make antibodies against the thyroid. And eventually, with the inflammation around the thyroid, it eventually, in the thyroid, it eventually doesn't function at a high enough level for you to get all of the thyroid hormone you need. So it's very common for, to need you know, thyroid hormone replacement when you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And we, even if you don't have thyroid hormone replacement, if there are any thyroid nodules or anything that's come to, to light, we just know that we, we follow those people just like we would anyone else with thyroid nodules. Okay, um, and if you're just tuning in, I just wanna remind you we are talking about thyroid health. I know we have a ton of questions coming in, so we're trying to get to all of them. I'm here with Dr. Joel Turner from GBMC. It's a great topic and a topic that a lot of people have um, concerns about. Uh, so Liz just uh, sent us this. I have four nodules on one side of my thyroid, all of which were too small to biopsy. How frequently should I have these checked? Sure. Um, the, it's, it's, thyroid nodules are extremely common. It'd be interesting to see how that was all, they were also originally found. But, but usually um, when we can't find it and they're too small to even biopsy, um, at the most that would be followed with a yearly ultrasound or even every other year if she had several and there were no changes. So it, there's no, it's a sp specific uh, question without knowing anything else about her, but, but usually the earliest six months, but if she's been followed for a while, it would be a yearly ultrasound. Gotcha. Um, Gluten-free and dairy-free, would that help a thyroid problem? Uh, no. It may no. help, it may help okay. a person, but it's not going to be related to your thyroid. Okay. That was, uh, that was the easiest question, right? Well, yeah, that was, that no. was Okay. So that makes that easy. Okay. Um, after your thyroid stops functioning and you're on Synthroid? Yes. Okay. Uh, is it best to eventually have your non-functioning thyroid gland removed or just leave it in? So, great question, and that was also uh, uh, sent in, I think, beforehand. Mm -hmm. 
And um, there's no, the, the, that is not an indication to take out your thyroid. Um, the, whether or not it's functioning, if you're talking about thyroid nodules that are benign, there, there are multiple causes or multiple reasons to take out your thyroid, but the fact that it's non-functioning, and again, assuming this person was asking, there's no suspicious nodules, there's no abnormal biopsies, no is the answer, we don't take out your thyroid. Okay, um, the difference in hypo, hyper? Sure, so um, it's, uh, again, most people walking around have normal thyroid function. Most people with thyroid nodules, benign or cancerous, have normal thyroid function. Um, but people can develop hyperthyroidism, which as we spoke about, can be transient or can be permanent. We usually put that person on a medicine, sometimes more than one medicine, sometimes to treat the symptoms and sometimes to actually stop the thyroid from making the excess hormone. And then usually there's three options of long-term therapy with the medicine, radioactive iodine to essentially burn the gland out, and then surgery. And, and usually those people, depending on where they are, if they're looking to get pregnant, you know, they choose surgery. If they have no issues and they wish to just have a longer, very reliable uh, treatment, then they use radioactive iodine. Sometimes you need more than one dose. Um, and some people, if, if they're not healthy enough and, and they don't want either, they'll, they'll stay on the medicine and they'll just be treated and, and bridged just with medicine. Um, and the, the hypothyroidism, again, the mainstay for treatment is, is thyroid hormone replacement. And usually the endocrinologist, we had a lot of questions about uh, how do I balance or how come my numbers are this and I'm on this dose. The, the endocrinologist usually, and some internists, will feel very comfortable drawing your blood to determine what your numbers look like, the thyroid stimulating hormone, and, and what dose you're on to determine, you know, if you're at the right dose or not. And sometimes when people are in the normal range but things are a little low, we still might give you a little bit more and any symptoms you may have may, may go away. So there is some, on the borders of the normal range, you still might require some therapy, but in general, the endocrinologists are, are, are very good at balancing out someone's thyroid requirements. Talk a little bit about um, the process if somebody were to opt for the surgery with their doctor. They think that's the best option. How is it? What is recovery like? Sure, sure. Great question. So, so uh, luckily, uh, surgery for your thyroid, uh, depending on what you have, half of your thyroid, sometimes we let you go home the same day. The total thyroid you'll spend overnight. It's usually a, a couple centimeter incision, maybe about two inches on your neck, and uh, low, low on your neck, kind of where my tie is. And... Um, Normal to have a sore throat, uh, a little bit of a stiff neck, some incisional discomfort, but most people, regardless of age, within a couple of days are doing a lot of their normal activities. Most people are back to work the next week. Um, most people they drive themselves to see me to the office the next week. So they really bounce back. Even people in their 70s and 80s will uh, physically, it, it doesn't set them back too much at all. Okay. Um, Someone asked, let me just find it. Um, if you are pregnant, how having a thyroid issue would affect pregnancy? Sure, and we saw a couple of questions also mm -hmm. come in uh, about that as well. So uh, basically, um, as far as the workup goes, we don't uh, discriminate against you because you're pregnant. You get worked up just like anyone else would. Um, obviously, there's no, if you needed a thyroid scan, there's no radioactivity, obviously, while you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. and, and we try not to operate, and usually we don't have to operate, even if it's cancer, until after you deliver. So it's um, it basically, when you're pregnant, you get worked up just like anyone else. Yeah. Okay, so this specific question was, how does hypothyroidism affect the baby? Oh, so it, it, really good. All the, as part of your standard uh, of workup, when, when you first show up pregnant, they will check your thyroid function study because... Um, uh, hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism are sort of contraindicated for pregnancy. So we like to make, we, we will make sure someone is normal uh, while they're pregnant okay, from thyroid what, function. What symptoms would I have before I see a doctor for a thyroid problem? Oh, so <clears throat> again, most people, if they're showing up with a thyroid nodule or nodules, they, they usually don't have any symptoms. Depending on the location, they, they could have some difficulty swallowing. If it was very large, they would have not necessarily difficulty breathing emergently, but they may notice some compressive symptoms when they're laying their head on their pillow or when they, their arms are over their head exercising. They may get 
more short of breath than they sort of normally would be. Um, but usually when their function is normal, you, you will have no symptoms unless the, the nodule is either the perfect spot to give you trouble swallowing or it's extremely large. When it comes to nodules, are these, are these genetic? Is it passed down through families? So uh, it, it usually not, but there can be family associations, as we mentioned, with cancer and also some types of nodularity. But in general, um, there's not a strong We'll see occasional clusters, but there's not a strong sort of family association. Um, it's more loose, but we do see people that come in and say, oh, my, my mother, my aunt, and my cousins all had thyroid disease of one form or another. So it's not uncommon to see it in families, but there's nothing worrisome about that. It's not as if you know, your, your parent had thyroid cancer, you are absolutely going to get it. Or if you have no thyroid nodules, you're at significant risk to get it. It's just something we follow um, for all patients that show up. Um, again, if you were just joining us, we were talking about thyroid health. It is such a popular topic. Actually, the questions are just coming in. Every time I have a question, I'm losing it because more questions are coming in. What is the biggest question you hear in your practice? So again, as, a, as an endocrine surgeon, most people come in, if they have thyroid nodules, they want to know, is it cancer? And if it is cancer, how bad is it going to be? You know, for me, how bad is the surgery? How bad is the recovery? And, and, and also the question that they sometimes can formulate is like, what, what's this going to do to me long term? Is this going to be horrible in terms of any therapy? And, and what's my life expectancy? And, and usually all those things are minimized once they hear about how well they'll do with the surgery and you know the overall life expectancy for people with thyroid cancer is you know, almost 98%. So, so if people feel better, sometimes they feel worse after going to the surgeon, but a lot of times for this, they actually feel better because the, the, it's, it's, a, it's a less uh, of a process, even the radioactive iodine, well tolerated. Um, people just bounce back from this pretty quickly. And, and keep in mind, uh, because we had uh, also questions about benign and malignant, that over 90% of the thyroid nodules are, are benign. So we, we still need to surveil them and biopsy them as needed, but most people, we try to really reassure them to decrease their anxiety that it's a benign condition. And even when it is cancer, it, we, we don't have to rush you up to surgery. We you know, get you ready and find a date that's good for you and take mm -hmm. you to the operating room. All right. Good to know. A lot of people um, asking about certain foods, how they affect your thyroid. So in general, what foods affect your thyroid? Yeah. So, you know, historically speaking, um, that iodine deficiency worldwide can be a problem with the large goiters that you would see. Well, you don't really see National Geographic anymore. But when you said the magazine, the large goiters and large thyroid nodules. But in this country, it was essentially taken away when they started putting iodine in the salt. So we don't typically see iodine deficient goiters in this country, but you normally get iodine with you know green leafy vegetables and things like that. So a normal healthy diet, you won't be iodine deficient, especially if you use any salt whatsoever. So usually, a, just a normal balanced diet it will take care of any deficiencies. So you won't. Perfect. Uh, Mary is asking. I have a thyroid nodule. And a recent sonogram showed calcification. I have a needle biopsy scheduled. How accurate is this test? That is the mainstay for how we follow all the thyroid nodules, uh, which is an ultrasound, and if needed, an ultrasound guided fine needle aspiration. So, depending on the type of calcifications, it can be an ultrasound sort of suspicious finding, but it, that, that is the best way to evaluate any thyroid nodule. Okay, can you do topical iodine? For... It doesn't say it's just oh, general, um, it's a general question. T topical, no. I mean, so I assume the person's asking, like, if they take a drop of iodine and put it on their skin, but that would be, but why you should eat a salad instead, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Karen's <laughs> asking, um, if a patient asks to use natural thyroid meds instead of synthetic, would you prescribe it? So that would be really a question that would go to an endocrinologist. And I think that we did get a bunch of question on, on alternative uh, um, you know, therapies 
for thyroid hormone replacement. And I think that those are discussions you really need to have with whomever is going to manage the, the blood test, whether it's your internist or your endocrinologist. Um, because I think I mentioned it before, all of the data is from really established synthroid replacement, which again is a, a very um, the tested long-term therapy that has no side effects that we know of. So it's, it's safe, and I understand people may, may not want to take a prescription pill, but those are really conversations they should have yeah. with their endocrinologist. Yeah, and a lot of the questions that are coming in are very specific, and we do just want to remind you to see your doctor uh, because this is just a Facebook conversation, but it's great to get just some general information about this topic because it is so important for people and such a popular topic out there. Um, Jody asked, my body temperature is really low, like 95, and I have two nodules. Does thyroid cause your body temperature to be so low? So uh, likely not, and again, just without having met her and see any of her labs, if her thyroid function studies are normal, then th there's, no, there's no function coming from those nodules and, and you know, there shouldn't be any symptoms from her thyroid. Okay, um, another follow-up question about the iodine on the skin so that won't absorb through and help? Again, I'm not familiar with that, but there, we don't typically see iodine deficiency. In this country, we don't see iodine deficiency uh, problems, one, because of the availability of salt and salt in your food, which is almost all iodized unless you have uh, sea salt. And, but the, um, any sort of normal healthy diet w would you, be very unusual to see an iodine deficiency. I mean, most people wouldn't, you've never seen anyone walk down the street with something that was that large, which in some of these iodine deficient countries, large parts of the population will still have all sorts of gorgeous. Okay, what about high CRP levels? Yeah, again, that that is a, is a blood test that's not specifically related to the thyroid. Okay. So, Again, that can be a measure of, of inflammation, but again, not it, without knowing anything more, you know, that wouldn't be a standard test that we would associate with any thyroid problems. Okay. All right, well, keep your questions coming in. I know we are bombarding you with questions, right? You've never had so many questions before in one, but this is great, a way to talk to um, a doctor from GBMC about this topic. Um, so if you just are tuning in, we want to remind you that one of the biggest questions we see is about weight gain, weight loss, right, when it comes to thyroid health. Um, and I was surprised when you said it a lot of times does not have much to do with right. the other. It's, it's an extremely, it's not necessarily a myth because it is true, but most people have normal thyroid function. So usually when we're looking at being either slightly heavy or very heavy into the obese range, it's usually not from your thyroid. It can be, but any, uh, your internist or any sort of comprehensive weight loss program, they will absolutely order thyroid function studies to, to kind of rule out the obvious. Mm -hmm. So if there is a slight weight gain and it's because your metabolism is slowed from your thyroid, th they can address that. But a, a lot of people um, may have an altered metabolism and it's it's not something that, you know, it's unrelated to their thyroid and it just has to be dealt with medically. Yeah. Is uh, the only option for an enlarged thyroid pills? So again, that is, um, it's a two sort of non, it's a sort of a non-specific question. Um, sometimes if, if the thyroid is overactive and large, we can treat it with radioactive iodine to shrink it. If it's not overactive and the thyroid's large, Many times on thyroid hormone suppression, it, it may not continue to enlarge, it may shrink, but, but usually that's um, a short-term alternative. Usually when the thyroid's large, assuming it's not acutely where someone had an episode of thyroiditis, it became painful and enlarged, and then as the inflammation went away, the thyroid sort of returned to its normal uh, shape. But usually when the thyroid's large, um, Again, even if it's a benign condition, it, it, it may not require any specific therapy if it's causing that person compression or, or pushing their windpipe over to one side. There, there are indications that we look at to determine whether or not they need surgery. Okay, uh, best advice for a patient who being re um, when being released from the hospital after a total thyroid removal? Right, and I think we, um, 
in general, uh, people, uh, we, we sort of let them return to a lot of their normal activities as tolerated. So, you know, we typically will send them home with a dressing that they can shower over, no drains, no staples, no sutures. And we tell them to just, you know, as you feel better, your activity will increase. We start them on thyroid hormone, which is, again, we've had a lot of questions about thyroid hormone. I know, so many. It's, it's a little bit easier for after surgery because when you don't have any thyroid, we give you a dose by weight. And usually that's either right on or a little high or a little low. So it, it's not, you won't be way off. Whereas a lot of the questions we had were, I need thyroid hormone, here's what my labs were, and this and that, where the doctor has to slowly start you either at one dose and then work up or work down, knowing that your thyroid still has function. Whereas when we do the that's thyroidectomy, right. they have right. no function, so it's a lot easier to get started. Okay. Well, we went through so many questions. I know you have more, you can keep them coming in but we have to let Dr. Turner go back and see patients. Um, but we wanna thank you so much. I know that was a lot of questions thrown at you, but we wanna thank you so much for answering all of those. And um, again, you can continue to write in and we will see you back here next month. Thank you so much. We'll see you back here tomorrow for Good Morning Maryland at 4.30. Have a great day.